Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Showcase video. I am once again taking a look at one of your designs that you have linked me in the comments section of one of my videos. And for today, I have chosen the Golden Falcon, which is this thing right here. So it's a fairly large ship with literally everything you'll ever need to survive out in space. It's got iron thrusters, hydrogen, atmospheric, it's got rockets, it's got gatling guns, it's got grinders, welders, merge blocks, connectors, and a fairly large interior for you to live your life as you're exploring space. So pressing F10 and finding the uh, Golden Falcon, I was a little bit disappointed that it wasn't using the uh, Golden Skin from the Texture Packs. I think you need to own the Deluxe Edition to have that. It might be using that. I don't own it, so I don't know. But anyway, this ship is not 23,100 large blocks. No, it's 1,647 large blocks with a PCU of 20,409. So there we go, it's a nice small ship, but you wouldn't be able to use this on a official server because of the PCU limit. So let's start by going around the outside, and then we'll head on into the interior and have a little nosy around there, give it a little test flight, and show what it can do. So starting at the very front here, we've got a nice window into the main cockpit area where we can see our flight seat. We've got some LCD screens in there, we've got our cargo container, and we can see we've got multiple doors, one there, and some steps going down to the bottom floor. Moving away, we've got some catwalks that are surrounding it with a sensor up and above there. I'm not too sure what that sensor does, because it didn't seem to activate anything as I went near it. So on this side, whichever side that is, we've got some hydrogen tanks with some grinders on it. Yes, it's a very weird thing. It caught me off guard at first, because there are welders on this, there are grinders on this, but it is in a very weird position. It also has these landing gears over here with some connectors on there for you to connect something up. But it looks like you could just go and scoop along in space some space rubbish and just grind it away with these things and put it all into your cargo containers. But it would be quite a challenge to make sure your cockpit didn't get damaged, but still it's a nice thing to have if you need to do a spot of grinding. Just in this corner here where the conveyor comes off from the grinders into the main body of the ship, we can see a big blue ion thruster that comes down and underneath. This moves along to the hydrogen thrusters and some atmospheric thrusters, which are attached onto our landing gear. Moving up and above the grinders, we can see we've got some more ion thrusters, and we've got some blast door parts. As we move along to the edge of this little nasal part, we've got a connector, our landing gear to basically connect us up to a smaller ship, or perhaps even use it to transfer cargo or wreckages of other ships to different locations. Behind the connector, we can sort of see down to a large hydrogen thruster which is sitting right there, so if I came down and underneath, you'll be able to see it like that. Moving to the very, very front, we've got some spotlights with a, another large ion thruster with a rocket launcher on top. Yeah, so this is going to be our main form of moving backwards or our braking speed, if that's what you want to call it. On the side of that, we've got another large hydrogen thruster to make sure we've got a nice lot of oomph to stop ourselves or to reverse, and then moving around the side there, we've got some catwalks which are covering up the conveyor slot, and then moving along, we've got some nice little blockwork there with some lights on it, blinking with some more hydrogen tanks with connectors on them. Moving on and around, we've got another large hydrogen thruster with some more atmospheric thrusters to help us on the left and the right, and then moving along from there, even more hydrogen thrusters to make sure we're not going to be running out anytime soon. It is a little bit overkill, considering how many different types of thrusters you have on this ship, but if you did not wish to build the iron thrusters, you could safely just use the hydrogen and the atmospheric thrusters to get around. Just underneath from there, we can see some more atmospheric thrusters and some more hydrogen thrusters just sticking out like that. And if I come further towards the main body, we can see some modules sticking out, we can see some gyroscopes sticking out. We also have a welder which is sitting right here, because this ship does feature a auto repair system on all of its critical components. So you can just switch on the projector, switch on the welders, and it will make sure that you stay flying through the air if you ever took any form of damage to those. 
And below that, we've got a small LCD screen. Above that, we can see inside one of the first recreation area, which is the spawn room. And we have a quick cargo access, so if you're mining outside and need to dump stuff into the ship, you can do that. Moving towards the back of the ship, we have got some stairs that come down to our main entrance. The stairs are flush with the landing gear, so that could be a little bit dangerous if you are landing on an uneven surface. But I found that just ramming it down and hoping for the best seems to do quite well. On the left and the right hand side we have got a wind turbine. Yes, it's a little bit odd because it does seem to power up once you have fully landed and engaged the landing gear. But of course it will not work while you're flying around. It's just there for a little bit of extra decoration. Then if I move above that we have got some more large iron thrusters. More large hydrogen thrusters. We can see the gyroscopes just sticking out there. And towards the back, one a large atmospheric thruster, surrounded by a very fancy piece of block work with two merge blocks on, and a camera. So this is how we're going to attach ourselves onto a much larger ship, or you could just attach yourself onto a enemy ship who have merge blocks, and blast them with that hydrogen thruster and destroy part of their ship, if you wanted to do that type of thing. Coming up and above that, we got some more merge blocks and some more connectors, for you to connect up maybe a smaller ship or to come up and underneath a space station just to recharge yourself, drop off any materials and all that and well whatever you want to do with them. In front of them some oxygen farms, see I got the name right that time, yes some oxygen farms to make sure you got a constant flow of hydrogen, I think they make hydrogen don't they? I know they make oxygen but ah. I can't remember these things, it's been a long time since I made a proper hydrogen ship. Anyway, between them we got the stairs, just separate the two, which come up to a sloped armoured block, to an ore detector, we then have two interior pillars on top of each other, with a blinking light, in front of that a laser antenna, we got some solar panels just featured on the top there, and another set just further below down here. We got four Gatling turrets to make sure that you don't get pummeled by meteors or a sneaky drone doesn't come and try and take you from above. And we have some more ion thrusters. Yes, there's quite a few large ion thrusters on this, which could be a bit of a problem if you intend to build this in survival mode, because early on it's quite difficult to actually get an ion ship up and running. But it does seem perfectly fine to run the ship without them, so you could simply have that as a long haul project to fully complete all the iron thrusters. We got more hydrogen thrusters for our downward thrust. If I come over to here where the Gatling turrets are, we can see the top of the large atmospheric thrusters and some more welders to make sure these are all fully repaired if you ever took damage in combat. Around and in front of this iron thruster here, we've got some more downward thrust with the atmospheric thrusters. And if I come along the little nasal part, I think that's what it's called, sticky out part, we've got some black slope blocks which come along to some more iron thrusters, more hydrogen thrusters, our blast door edge just separating these two thruster parts, which come along to this with some sloped windows, some more corner blocks, some more hydrogen thrusters, and some more ion thrusters. Moving around and just coming down underneath to make sure we get a good gander at this thing. Below the spotlight there is our hydrogen thruster, there are some more atmospheric thrusters. We've got our landing gear which I almost crashed into there. And we've got some nice little block work coming around housing these thrusters. Underneath the main body of the ship we don't have too much. We do have a camera just sitting underneath our main entrance so we can view it forwards from here. Which is quite nice actually. If I just aim the camera like this, this is kind of the view you get, so you can see if you're landing on a semi-flat surface or not. And with that all done and out the way, I believe it is time to get into my character and get into the ship. I did see an LCD screen there. Oop, there we go. Golden Falcon. And that is the name of the ship. Just hidden away on that little corner LCD screen. So it's a very nice design. There's a lot going on with it. Although one of the big flaws with this ship, which I can see right away, which is kind of flaw with most of my ships, is there's not much protection on the key components. So a barrage of missiles coming into the side of this is going to knock off your hydrogen thrusters, your iron thrusters, and your hydrogen tanks, which could be an even bigger problem if you had the critical tank explosion mod turned on. Because then you would lose most of the ship. Yes, like I said, that is it for the outside, and it's a lovely design. So now it's time to get into my character who's just below the ramming antenna. Just got dropped down here. Good, we're on creative mode, I would have died otherwise. And we can walk around past our wind turbine. 
and around to these steps. So coming up the steps, we're instantly greeted by an interior turret to make sure you're getting rid of any sneaky so-and-sos who are trying to uh, get into your ship. We can see we've got some red batteries there and a jump drive hidden away there with some more thrusters. The sensor up there will just open up this door, so when I come through, that will close up. This will open up when I walk through. It will hopefully close eventually. We do have a sensor here which is responsible for opening up this door, this door and that door. So if I was to walk away from it, all the doors would close until I get close enough and they would open up. So on this side we can walk through to our recreation area number one. This has our medical bay in there for us to recharge and to respawn on. We got our DLC chair, DLC table and up and around these stairs we got our lockers and toilets and another sofa to sit on. Coming back down and through this door, which opens automatically thanks to that sensor, we can come to our recreation area number two, which features more DLC blocks. We've got a window to view outside, corner table, planter, bed, cooker, locker, and another toilet. Coming around and up these set of stairs, we've got another settee, which is a corner version, and a armory to store your stuff in. Coming back down and through this door, we can cover up these grey stairs all the way up to the top where we have a interior pillar coming across from the main window which comes across to this LCD screen which will tell you all the information about your ship. So the air hatch door is closed, air vents 100%, oxygen farms are on, hydrogen is on and all that. We've got some cargo containers going around the edge of the room. So with this one over here even tells us with an LCD screen that it's been used 8.2% and this one is 0% full. We have a button panel, so if I bring up the little HUD there, let me just go to a new tab, we can turn the O2 H2 generator on and off, the oxygen farms, the air vent hatch, and the turrets with that button panel. Behind us, we've got another sensor to open up this door with some more LCD screens. One screen is for the components in the inventory, so we've got some bulletproof glass, interior plate, and one hell of a lot of small steel tubes. For whatever reason, perhaps the creator was a small steel tube collector. On the left hand side, we've got ores and ingots, where we've got 1k ice, 10 nickel, 1k uranium, and 10 iron. Coming through this door, it'll automatically do, thanks to that sensor, and we come to our jump drive or little reactor bay, whatever you want to call this custom room. Turning off my light but a nice red glow. An LCD screen telling us how long our power is going to last for, and above that we have a large reactor with 1k uranium in it. Below us we have a jump drive, and above us we have a, a gravity generator with some more blinking lights that we can see just up there, with an air vent on both sides. We can see some more welders over there to make sure this is all at 100% if you're in combat. We got some hydrogen engines if you need some additional power, perhaps even use them as emergency power. And then coming around there we can see we've got some more batteries on the floor, DLC projector showing us a full design of the ship, and another LCD screen telling us the time and date of when this video was being recorded. And behind that a large atmospheric thruster with some more welders to make sure they're all welded up. And coming around to here. We've got some lockers, some timer blocks, some program blocks. On that one, we have the, let me just edit this, the floor plan script. And on this one, we have the automatic LCD screens. And in front of them, we got some more button panels, but they are just to control all the other stuff that the main cockpit would control, such as turning stuff on and off and whatnot. So speaking of the main cockpit, coming through this door and all the way to the front, we can get into this cockpit and we have rather a lot of options to be going through, but luckily they are quite simple. Number one is to shoot our rocket launchers at the very front there, above those ion thrusters. Number two is to turn on and off the Gatling turrets, which are just above there. Number three is to turn on the grinders, which are situated in front of us. So if I come in first person, there they are. Number four is the camera underneath that I showed you earlier. 5 and 6 are for the landing gear, 7, 8 and 9 are to turn off the thrusters, so if you don't want the iron thrusters on, you just turn them off, oop, they're hydrogen, there we go, so we just turn them on and off, whatever you want to do with them, just put them back on for the moment. Tab number 2, the antenna, auto detector, laser antenna, gyroscopes, we then have our auto repair system which we can turn on, we have our 
gravity generator and our jump drive. So we can press 7 to jump, but we can't because we're on a planet. Tab number 3 are for the connectors going all the way around the ship. So the ones at the top and the ones in the middle there and along the side. Number 5 is for the merge blocks at the back. Number 6 is for the merge blocks on the top. 7 is to view. Don't know where that's viewing in fact, I think that's viewing upwards. Number 8 is to view backwards. And number 9 is to turn off the blinking lights. And number 4, the parachutes. Yes, there are parachutes hidden away on this. And I think I did miss them, yep, there they are, right next to the oxygen farms. So with that all done and out of the way, it's time to take off and test out the thrusters with all of them turned on. So there we go, now we've taken off, the wind turbines have stopped spinning, and let's go forward, shall we? So going forwards, we have quite a reasonable amount of speed. It's not as speedy as some ships, but it's serviceful. Stopping is roughly the same, actually. So we're fairly good at stopping. It's not super fast, but it's still good. Going left, it's pretty fast. And going right, it's exactly the same. Going backwards, is very, very fast. Look at that go up. And then stopping, so we can start going down. So going down, Oof, quite a lot of speed going down and going up. Again, quite a lot of speed with that one as well. So it seems to be well rounded for the size of the ship. Moving my mouse around, we have quite a lot of weight to it, to where there is a slight delay between where I'm moving my mouse and where the ship is turning. And we can just rotate ourselves like so. So it's got quite a lot of weight on it. You're not going to do any kind of type maneuvering. But there is enough control on there to get you out of some sticky situations. So now let's go for a quick little ride. We'll put the... Where are the welders? The welders are turned on now. And then we can come across to this pirate base over here and say hello. And that'll be it for this video. Well, the video is basically done now. We've gone around the outside. We've gone in the interior. Talked about the buttons and had a little flight test. So now it's just time to be silly and just shoot some rockets into this ore handling facility. Okay, so we're now approaching one kilometer. The auto repair system has been turned on. Our turrets have been turned on. So if I was to turn like so, we should be able to. Yep, there they go. Oopsie, I'm going down. Oh, and there we go. They're repairing it as fast as possible. The projectors have turned on and we are back in control. Look at this go. So they're going to keep trying and blasting, but it's no good. The creative mode is too powerful for the pirates to handle. So there we go. They're trying to blow up that hydrogen thrust at the front there. They might be able to get away with it. We can just keep turning. Keep ramming ourselves into that. And reversing. They're still launching the rockets in there, but we are still going. We can see the projector there. And the landing gear has gone. Oh, I think the game has sort of frozen. Well, that's not good, is it? And there we go. The game has recovered. It does not like the auto repair systems of Sunships. Yes, we can just keep blasting it. Let's blast a large cargo container. Oh, it's not working. There we go. And go for a little ram. Oh, they, oh, they took the cockpit out. The one weakness of the ship. They took the cockpit out. But anyway, that is the Golden Falcon. Look at the projector going all the way around. Now see, if you stuck a build and repair system on this, that would be quite a deadly machine. But anyway, that is it for the Golden Falcon. Hopefully you have enjoyed this video. Please stop shooting me. Thank you. And it will be in the description below if you wish to download and play around with it yourself. So thank you all for watching, and I'll be back with another video some point soon. Bye-bye.